Hi everyone, uh, in today's video we are exploring the Gemini CLI, Google's new command line interface that brings the power of Gemini models directly to your terminal. Gemini CLI is designed to help developers, data analysts and AI enthusiasts work smarter by integrating Google Generative AI right into your workflow. No need for complex APIs or cloud consoles, just your terminal and the Gemini CLI. Let's talk about what it can do natural language prompts you can interact with gemini using plain english or any language just type your prompt and get meaningful code ready responses instantly whether you're asking for python scripts sql queries or shell automation gemini delivers context awareness gemini cli can understand the files in your local directory this means you can ask it to review your code optimize functions or generate documentation all based on your current project context. Multimodal support. It's not just text. Gemini CLI support images, files, and other inputs, enabling a more visual and data-rich interaction, perfect for debugging screenshots or generating structured data from file inputs. Integration-friendly. You can connect Gemini CLI to other tools like Git, VS Code, or even automation workflows. It becomes an AI-powered teammate that fits right into your daily stack. Custom prompts and agents. You can create reusable prompt templates or even small AI agents that perform repetitive tasks, from code reviews to documentation updates, saving you hours each week. In short, the Gemini CLI turns your command line into an AI workspace, capable of coding, analyzing, documenting, and even reasoning, all powered by Google latest multimodal uh, models. Um, so we'll look at few basic uh, use cases through Gemini. Uh, you can install uh, Gemini through terminal. I'm using uh, Mac. Uh, you can find the commands on the internet and uh, install the Gemini. Um, and either you can use google api keys or you can log in with your google e uh, your gmail credentials and you can start working on the gemini cli so let's dive into a few of the use cases let's start with uh, assessing the repository i've downloaded one of the code for my application on the local machine and let's see if we can read the structure of the code can it suggest anything uh, let's say analyze this report re uh, repository and summarize its architecture main modules and project dependencies Okay, and it will ask you to confirm the repository directory. It's in your home directory, uh, and it's asking uh, part to the project's root directory. Um, so let's say documents at, and it will list down. All the directories. Let's see if we can find the directory, or I'm in the wrong directory, guys. Probably downloads at. Okay, let's find where did I store okay. 
welcome let's go back to gemini and see if it picks up yep So it's analyzing the report repository and obviously it will examine its structure and dependencies. And it's listing down that the application is built with Node.js, Byte and Tailwind CSS. It's examining the package JSON, uh, the configuration files, and it's reading through the configuration files starting with package JSON and configuration uh, JavaScript files. And it's listing down, going through the configuration files, uh, how uh, the configuration files are structured, what kind of uh, variables I'm using. And right now it's detailing the dependencies and providing a summary. So if you go through this, uh, it has completed the ana analysis of the repository as a summary of its architecture, main modules, and dependencies, right? So it's listing down the framework which I've used. It's built on React, build tool, routing, the styling, the component-based API interaction, uh, what kind of API interaction is being made uh, from a backend API standpoint. The main modules is listing down the main modules, the main configuration files, the project dependencies uh, from a core build standpoint, the styling, the components, form, SDK, animation. And it's giving you a summary that there's a modern, well-structured React application for calorie trapping app, uh, tracking app. So this is nothing but a calorie tracking app, which I built on uh, Gemini uh, 2.5 Pro. Um, it leverages a rich ecosystem of libraries to provide a feature-rich and visual appearing user experience. The code base is modular and follows common best practices for modern web development. So let's let's it, it gave you it went through all the uh, configuration files and and it was able to tell uh, what's the project all about, right? In detail, let's dive into the project in itself. Um, does the code code has inbuilt security features? Let's try to probe a little bit now that it has went through the structure, it knows. Uh, the architecture, the modules, the project dependencies, let's see. And it's giving me the security related aspects of the code base, how the input validation is done, how the API interaction is done, uh, the authentication and authorization for the app. And it's listed down what's missing. So there is no explicit CSRF protection uh, cross-site request forgery protection. However, modern authentication strategies such as those based on JWT stored in local storage and sent in authorization headers can be immune to CSRF. The exact level of protection would depend on the implementation details of the SDK, what I have used. Um, so I have built this on base 44 
using wise coding. So no explicit security headers. I didn't find any code that sets security related HTTP headers. This is typically handled at the web server or local balance uh, level. So it's not necessarily a flaw in the front end code. So application appears to have solid security foundation with a particular focus on authentication, authorization, and input validation. The use of dedicated SDK for API communication is a significant strength as it centralizes and standardizes security practices. While there are some areas where security could be further in enhanced, such as explicit CSRF protection and security header, the existing measures provide a good baseline for a secure web application. So you can dig further into the code, understand basically where there may be some gaps, there is scope of improvements, and you can further edit and, and you can use, uh, let's say if we say give a prompt, uh, build uh, build what's missing in the security layout of this application. Just doing his thing. Let's see if it can do it. Um, I can certainly help you with that. I'll focus on implementing two security enhancements, the Tom sanitization to prevent XSS and the content security policies. Uh, due to the limitation of front end only, I cannot fully implement because it's only the front end code which I've shared as a repository. Um, let's allow once. And it was giving you options. Uh, you can review those options, apply those changes. And let's go ahead with applying the changes. So it's implementing the sanitization function, which is recommended. Um, CSP cannot be built because I've not shared the backend aspect uh, in the repository. OK. Let's see, apply this change. A separate utility has been created and to add a CSP to the index.html, um, now add a content security meta tag to it. Okay, let's go ahead with this. Just constructing the policy and I've now implemented this planned security enhancement. Here's what I've done. It's giving me what it has done in terms of adding to the library to the project. Uh, and it also has created a new utility function. You can use this function to sanitize any user generated content before rendering it as an HTML, right? And it's giving the example usage, uh, how we want to utilize it in our project. Um, it has added also a restrictive CSP to the index.html file. This policy helps to mitigate access as other injection attacks by specifying the sources from which the browser is allowed to load resources. These changes provide a significant enhancement to the application security. As a next step, you should identify any components that render user generated and apply the sanitize HTML function to them, right? Uh, if you feel that any of the components uh, which are mainly rendering any user generated content, uh, you can apply the sanitize HTML function uh, to that uh, particular part of uh, the web application, right? So this is how you can uh, analyze your code repository. You can find the gaps, improvements, and in implement those changes. This is one of the use cases. I think there are multiple uh, use cases that we can use. Let's use a more social use case. Um, uh, let's analyze the latest AI news. Uh, compare. Uh, For the news based on applicable. 
capability. How does it improve the AI ecosystem and create a snippet which can be posted on LinkedIn as per the guideline of less than 3000 characters, right? Let's see what it does. So it will analyze it. It's looking at Google search, picking up the latest AI news. Uh, let's see, it's creating a LinkedIn content, which is obviously less than 3,000 characters, uh, what it turns out. So it's a basic uh, LLM response, uh, which is showing, uh, and it's also highlighting the three key trends, right? And it's also scoring those news based on what context we provided, right? Uh, how it is going to be instrumental in uh, the evolution of the AI ecosystem. So it's also highlighting those, how it is improving the AI ecosystem, for instance, in the news. And here is a draft for LinkedIn post summarizing these key developments, right? So it has created a simple draft with uh, LinkedIn hashtags. Uh, and I'm assuming this is less than 3,000 characters, right? Now I want to post this automatically to LinkedIn, right? Let's create a script to post this automatically to LinkedIn account. So obviously a LinkedIn, uh, to automatically post it, you need a LinkedIn API and it's creating a Python script to do this. Yes, allow once. Um, you need to get a client ID and a secret key. So if you go to the developer option, uh, developer portal of LinkedIn, you can create an app and it will give you a client ID and a secret key, which you can pass it on to this Python script and you can run this script to automatically uh, even uh, post the LinkedIn post, which is uh, the, the LinkedIn content, which uh, Gemini CLI has uh, created. So it's giving you the options, get your LinkedIn API credentials, edit the script, replace the access token and the URN, and install the request library. And you can, you can run uh, uh, the script, once you have updated the script, you can run it from a terminal to post on a LinkedIn profile. Uh, the script will then post the AI news summary we crafted directly to your LinkedIn profile, right? Um, so this is the way you can also create a trigger for it. You can trigger it on a daily, weekly basis at a certain time. You can create that on the script and uh, once you run that script or you can trigger that script to multiple options. So that's pretty much for uh, today. Uh, there are multiple use cases you can run through um, and play around with it. It is uh, a very adaptive, very scalable uh, CLI options which you can integrate into your AI workflows. Thanks everyone.